We're back with The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Nika Gule joins us this morning for Off the Press. Uh, it's actually the last for 2022. Nick, it's good to have you join us this morning. Once again, Merry Christmas. Good morning, Messi. Merry Christmas to you and Merry Christmas to our viewers. All right, then let's, you know, delving to the matter now. Uh, we start off with the Nation newspaper. The Nation says G5 governor's position puts a tickle in a tight corner. It feels like there's a song you know, by a Nigerian artist to this situation. Why PDP candidate cannot seek elders' intervention? Don't sanction WK orders. These are writers underneath the bold caption. And Lagos names preferred beaters for the fourth mainland bridge. 30 billion for senators, reps, package in 2023 budget. And <laughs> some people say it's, it's, it's a fiscal irresponsibility, the budget of 2023. Football legend Pele dies at 82. Defend yourself against bandit, says governor. Abiondu signs 472 billion naira 2023 budget into law. Buhari lords bellow on security projects in Kogi. Buhari lords bellow, that's Yahaya bellow on security projects in Kogi. That's uh, what you find this morning on the nation. But let's turn attention to the leadership uh, this morning. Sanction threats. G5 governors, their PDP, say we're not afraid. Oh, really? It's a lot. We have done nothing wrong. Or oh, Tom, there's no crack in G5 ranks, we keep saying. Struggle for southern presidency continues, Akira Dolu. I really don't know what's going on. It feels like, you know, we're living in a different dispensation. We're proud of Yahya Bello on security project execution. President Mohammed Buhari is quoted on that. And uh, the leadership is also talking about the soccer legend Pele that died or who has died at the age of 82. Superstar of uh, Brazil. Quite unfortunate. But uh, I had some prayers with him and, of course, his family. Lagos lawyer, MBA demands 5 billion naira compensation for Balanle Rahim. Alleged terrorism court stops DSS EFCC from arresting Emefiele. Abiodu signs 472 billion naira 2023 budget. That's for Ogun State. That's it on the leadership. Now we have the punch. The punch says, I grieve PDP governors demand Tunubu support in five states. Oh, wow. PDP governors concerned about political careers seeks assurance from Tunubu ex Lagos governor to brief party. And Keridolu insists Sardine must succeed Buhari. And so you know the issue of it's a gentleman agreement. Now, um, yes, he has to go to the south. But what part of the south are we talking about now? Is it the southwest or the southeast? G5 governors visit Ekwere Madu in prison, return from the United Kingdom. Uh, Abuja court bars DSS orders from arresting the Mephili. This might just be dominating all of the papers this morning. Telecom 6 NCC approval to disconnect banks. Uh, we had this conversation yesterday with the stakeholder, and uh, we probably might just be heading towards, you know, that destination. The Daily Sun says, I am not perturbed by G5 governor's plots. Should you be perturbed or not perturbed? But at the end of the day, you know, Nigerians... Uh, the electorate, of course, uh, they have a mind of their own. They definitely decide who becomes the president, uh, even though you have all the factors that might affect it in 2023. Atiku is saying, I'm not put up by G5 governor's plot. And all seem to be tilting towards the APC, according to the reports this morning. Bandits killed 20 in Bauchi communities. Residents flee. Rain of tears for Obiazo as Amechi's burial holes February the 16th. Jonathan, Atiku, Kalu, Tunubu, Obi, Okoa, Mwosu, others pay tribute to Ohanese's president. Now, don't forget, Amechi is, you know, uh, the Ohanese, former Ohanese's president, who's late now. 
Bolanle killing. Police will work with Lagos Attorney General to prosecute corporates, IGP is saying. Uh, do we need all of that? Uh, is the law not very explicit on the issue of mother? Alleged terrorism, more drama as court bars DSS IGP from arresting Godwin Emefiele of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Four fear dead in Kogi explosion as Buhari visits. I will pursue a Jakuta steel issues to conclusion before leaving office that's what the president is saying i mean there are more interesting headlines but we're out of time let's have uh nika Gule join this morning and share his thought nika Gule, which of the headlines uh would you like to react to this morning yes we will quite we'll have quite a lot on the plate um I think I would uh, like to start with uh, the mother of the lawyer because it's a really sad one. The year is ending on a very sad note. And that is because the Nigerian police that is being paid by Nigerians, that is being recruited, trained, armed and paid by Nigerians have again uh, turned their guns on the people that they are expected to defend. And the scary aspect of this is that uh, it's just a question of who is next, because all these shenanigans, you know, the statements issued by the IGP and all of that, in the usual Nigerian way, we don't see any hope that this case is going to be prosecuted to its logical conclusion. And this officer who has deprived a Nigerian of her life we also have his own life deprived. Uh, we, we, we're not confident, we're not hopeful that that is going to happen, especially under this government. So that's actually the scary part. All right, then Let, let's move on from you know that uh, headline and look at all the issues this morning on uh, the pages of a national dailies. Uh, G5 governor's position. Uh, position puts Atiku in a tight corner, and that's on the nation. Now, on the leadership, it says that G5 governors dare the PDP. Uh, they say we're not afraid. So, uh, does, uh, does the question as to where, why they haven't been sanctioned, the issue of sanction, because you you can't say that you work for a certain organization and then you, you're, you know, pushing the cause of another organization. It's very contradicting and uh, without um, any, you know, um, any saying, I mean, it, what should be done? It's suspected that this is, you know, contrary. It's, it's not legal. It's not uh, what should be. But this is what, you know, these governors are saying. And uh, they're also demanding support, according to the report from the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress. Uh, what are your thoughts on this, really? Has the PDP lost itself? Uh, you know, a house that cannot put its act together, cannot stand? Yes, th this is a real problem for the, for the PDP uh, because uh, they cannot just come out to sanction these governors because we're talking about five states. To win a presidential election, you need to win the popular vote that means you need to win the highest votes first and foremost and then you need 25 percent of the votes in two-thirds of the states in nigeria so uh, two-thirds of 36 states is 24 states so if you now have five states taken out of 36 you are now battling with 31 states first and foremost to win that 25 percent and you see, these governors are very much on the ground in their states. They control the party structures in their states. They control, uh, to a large extent, the electorate that comes out to vote because the electorate that cannot be controlled, that is those who are uh, where to do, who don't need a, a meet ticket from a governor or so, those ones have voter apathy. They usually will sit at home in their houses uh, on election day or some will even fly out of the country uh for various reasons that they will give so these governors have these structures in their hands so the the pdp is fully aware that look we cannot be joking with uh, five states and uh, it, that is why it's difficult for them to visit the sanctions that ordinarily should have been visited or any member of a party who is engaging in anti-party activities 
On the other hand, the, the G5 governors themselves also have a difficult situation because, you see, right now they are hibernating. You know, some of them uh, haven't come out to say they are supporting any other presidential candidate. So, look, we are, we are, we are two months away from the polls. And uh, as a governor, you are here to take a stand to say, okay, this is where the camp, where I belong. That's also a problem for the governors. But at the end of the day, these are politicians. And politicians have a way of resolving their issues the political way. So I believe that there must be some sort of horse trading and all sorts of night crawling meetings and all of that to, 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 to kind of have a resolution to this. And we look forward to the next few days or weeks to see where this is all going to end. Well, but, but the question would be, should this be, I mean, should, it, should this be the case? Are you not surprised that the fact that uh, you have governors who belong to a certain party not placing or putting their loyalty to uh, the party, but seem to be, you know, having affiliation, uh, fraternizing with other political parties? Is it normal? I mean, that's what it's like. You have a family. I mean, if, if that would be a good illustration and then you, you seem to discard your family, then you are uh, supporting another family and projecting them. In politics, in, in a normal course of things, as a family, is not normal. But in politics, there is what they call, in politics, uh, there are no permanent friends. It's all about permanent interest. Even when there's so a the law. I mean, even when there are rules of engagement. Politicians don't understand those rules. So let's, let me draw our attention back to 20, in the run-up to the 2019 elections. We had governors from the PDP who actually left and joined the APC. And that contributed to, I know I'm not even talking about 2019, I'm talking about 2015, when, when President Buhari first won election. In that 2015 election, there were governors in the, in the uh, PDP who actually I think it was a G7, G8 something. I can't remember what that G was. But they actually left and joined the APC. They, they were a bloc that joined the APC. And that contributed to bringing President Buhari into office. So these are the kind of things you see every now and then, especially in Nigerian politics, where these politicians continue to jump ship from one party to the other because of their own interest. They don't think about family. If these guys think that we're a family, they will even treat us better. How is a father uh, watching children hungry, uh, children sick, can assess medical care, and that father will care nothing about it? That's the way the politicians are treating us. To them, this thing is all about politics, it's all about interest, it's all about grab, grabbing. So they're, they're, not, they're not thinking like families. And I can assure you that this is all politics, and they are going to settle this thing in a political way, in one way or the other. The next few days or weeks ahead, uh, we we'll we'll make it clearer to us. Okay, um, let, let's uh, you know turn our attention to the Ajakuta steel. The fact that there's been several allocation funds have been allocated to the Ajakuta steel without any, you know, I, I'm not sure they produce anything, uh, you know, for a very long time now. But we have been allocating resources and on the punch, it says Ajakuta steel project, five hundred thousand jobs. Uh, 1.6 billion naira annual revenue. I, I really don't know where that's coming from. Uh, the president is also saying that he's not going to give up on that. He will uh, definitely continue. Your thoughts, really? Agu Nick Agule, can you hear me? So I can hear you. All right, then. What do you make of the uh, Jakuta steel that has not been productive for a very long time? And uh, the fact that uh, we still have expectations. I don't know if this is real in paper. It was just, just a hearsay or statements that's been made by the president saying uh, he will continue projects, uh, job opportunities, and what have you. So we constantly have to you know, invest money, allocate money to... Um, a sector or an agency or an organization, whatever it is we target, that's not productive. Nothing has come out of it. Yes, so what I'm saying is, Ajakuta is a sad story in Nigeria, just like the power sector, the petroleum sector, the gas sector, 
These are low-hanging fruits that Nigeria has failed to pluck over time. You cannot have development without iron and steel. You know, you cannot have development without, without electricity. You cannot have development with gas. You cannot have development without having all the infrastructure. And Nigeria has taken her eyes off these basic ingredients. That, you know, develop nation areas. And we have all these steel plants all over the country, and we have allowed them to rot. Just as we have allowed the refineries to rot, and we have allowed uh, our gas plants to rot and all of that. And one of the reasons behind this is what we keep preaching. The government can't do any business. You see, even in the advanced world, in America, in the UK, and all those kind of places, where systems are working, institutions are strong, government has realized that they cannot run business e efficiently. And so they have handed over these factors of production into the private sector. In Nigeria, we have a very clear case. We look at NITE of those days, and we look at telecom of today, and we cannot even, there is no basis for comparison. And the only difference is because the telecoms was handed over to the private sector, who have brought in their money, their expertise, their technology, to provide these telecom services to Nigerians. The same thing needs to happen. Of course, for this government, they have less than six months to go. So we are looking at the next government. One of the first things the next government must do is to privatize totally the steel sector. Hand over this in a very transparent, open, and legitimate privatization process. Let those who are operating in the steel sector around the world come in and then take these things and then run with. And Nigeria will be the better for. Not only are we now going to have the necessary raw materials to develop our own industries so that we are no longer importing cars, importing machinery, and all of that. This thing is going to create humongous jobs for the young men and women in Nigeria who have graduated and have nothing to do. So to me, that's just the solution. We need to put these things in the private sector and then government sits back, regulate the sector, and then make humongous money from the taxes that will now be paid. Um, but at this time, the Ajakuta Steel is a project or is projecting uh, 500,000 jobs, 1.6 billion naira or billion dollars annual revenue. So should they not be given another chance? And on the second hand, why have we constantly allocated resources uh, to Ajakuta Steel when we know that it's not productive? So we've been, you know, paying salaries for nothing. There's no result. The same way we're paying salaries to refineries that are not working, paying salaries to the power sector when you don't see electricity, it's all about the Nigerian problem. Messi, let us ask ourselves. These uh, uh, steel plants were built, I think, in the 80s. And from the 80s till now, a period of more than 40 years, they have delivered nothing. How then are we going to be sure that these promises that they are making will not just be on paper, but it will result into tangible uh, delivery? don't have any hope for that because i ask myself what is going to change between the way they are operating now and the way they will operate to deliver this kind of humongous returns that they are talking about i think it's just a scam it's totally a scam it's not going to happen we have waited for more than 40 years for it to happen and it has not happened and there is no hope that it's going to happen even in the next four years when a new government comes in the solution to this is as what we have done in the telecoms let us just let the government step back and leave this thing into the hands of the private sector and nigeria will be the better for it hmm. well uh it's very saddening and unfortunate but we we move away from that and look at what the issues still here on uh, the papers this morning as we coast it down uh, another talks about abuja court barring dss and orders from arresting uh, the cbn governor the godwin emefili i mean to be very specific because you know there's been a lot of uh, confusion or back and forth with his identity whether it's a godwin emefili or it's just godwin of the central bank of nigeria to be precise but your thoughts really I mean, what do you make of this that, uh, you know, a very prominent uh, agency of government as, as such as that uh, has 
governor or director, like you like to say, will be involved in all of this back and forth? I think it's a sad day for the judiciary. The judiciary is there as an arm of government to adjudicate on matters, be they criminal or civil. And so when the judiciary now turns itself to blocking investigation, blocking the security agencies from reaching out to people and bringing them to the law, it is like a doctor who is now blocking patients from coming to the hospital. It doesn't make sense. What you will expect courts to do is to give a free hand to the security agencies to carry out their work. And then when the result of the investigation results into a prosecution, that is when the judiciary should now make a determination as to whether the case of the state against this individual is strong enough to, to, to bring on a conviction. So the, the, the problem in the Nigerian judiciary uh, is there, and it's one of the things that has to be sorted. Because, you see, all these countries that we are jumping to, Japan to UK, Japan to uh, to US, Canada, all those places. It is because the law enforcement in that place is very strong. That's what keeps citizens in check, and then the place becomes sane enough to attract us to start Japan to. If we don't enforce laws in Nigeria, it's not going to happen. Nigeria will never develop. And for me, the judiciary should just step back from all these shenanigans. They should just be waiting for when cases are before them to adjudicate. Why would you be stopping somebody from being arrested? He should be arrested. You know, in the U.S., the security agencies went into Donald Trump's office and investigated him. They went into Boris Johnson's office and investigated him. That is what should happen. Nobody should be above the law. And for me, what the judiciary is doing here is a sad one. And they actually, they, I expect the National Judicial Commission, the NJC, to step in here and call this Aaron judge to, to, to book. Now, as we cross this down, I know you have talked about the issue of Bolan Le Rahim. Uh, that's what you started off with this morning. But another aspect of, you know, uh, is that the NBA is demanding that fine. Uh, should we be talking about compensation before justice? Should justice not take uh, prominence? Justice has to take uh, uh, the first step. Uh, we have th this case, like we're just saying now, has to be allowed on fettered prosecution and uh, sentencing if, if the offender is convicted. So that should be what should be preeminent because sadly a, la a life has been lost, a promising life has been lost. She cannot be brought back, but the consequences have to be meted on to those who have caused this unfortunate death so i agree that let us walk through the justice process bring on the prosecution and then a conviction and then if there are damages that need to be paid they need to be paid but what is to come first and foremost before even prosecution is counseling you know in nigeria we don't have counseling services and that is why a lot of people are traumatized a lot of people are suffering uh, psychological effects you see uh, the, the family, I think it was said that the husband or so was even in that vehicle where the wife was shot. That man is totally traumatized. The family members are traumatized. Friends and colleagues are traumatized. As where all of the counseling services should have been extended to these people to try and heal them. Because it is that lack of healing that has made Nigeria to be such an angry society. You can hardly have a conversation, a decent conversation with people because people are carrying so much within them. And that, to me, is what is lacking. Nigeria needs to put these counseling services in, in, in place so that people who, have, who are victims of cases like this dastardly murder can, can, can actually uh, be healed before uh, getting back into society. Well, Nick Agule, we have to go at this point. Uh, thank you so much for being with us and being part of, of the press, the very last for 2022. I look forward to seeing you in 2023, all things being equal. Thank, thank you very much, and uh, thanks to our viewers. And, and I think uh, since it's the last edition, let me wish all of us a happy New Year 2023. If you have not yet received your voter's card, please go and receive it, because 2023 is a watershed moment for Nigeria where we are going to elect the leaders that we want. Thank you. And that's it. We take a break. When we return, we'll be looking uh, at our second...
our first conversation right here. We're looking at uh, the budget that's been passed by the National Assembly uh, from, uh, you know, 21 point trillion naira for 2023. Please stay with us. 